Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all can, can do better than that. Stand on your feet. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made, not us. But that our job is to rejoice and be glad. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful this morning that God has allowed us to come back into the house. David says that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Oh, pack your bags and put on your fine linen, put on your perfume and your, put on everything that you need to get on that night. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's nothing like being inside the house. Come on, come on, come on. Don't wait on me. It's, it's not like being inside the house of the Lord. Because in the house, there's a word in the house. There's worship in the house. God is here. Uh, when well, there are two or three gathered in this name, there will he be in the midst. I don't know about you. I'm happy this morning to be in the house. I done been to work in 2020. I done been to the grocery store in 2020. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. I done been street in 2020. I done hung out with family and friends in 2020. But I have yet to get in the house. Oh, y'all ain't feeling me this morning. Uh, now, Sunday school, we, we talked about being thankful. We got something to be thankful for. God allowing us to be back into the house of God. Amen. Happy 4th of July. Amen. Amen. Happy returning to the church. Happy, happy, happy. Uh, we thank God for allowing us to be back into the house. Amen, amen. At this time, thanks to God, we're going to have our invocation. Amen. And then after that, we will have our deacons. Come on, y'all say amen. 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 We're going to have our deacons come and lead us into worship. Amen, somebody. All them songs you've been missing to get ready for it. All, all the hymns you've been missing, get ready for it. Amen, amen, amen. Our invocation by Reverend Davis. Amen. amen. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. Wow. You're a God that sees and a God that cares. And for that, Lord God, we tell you thank you. Lord, we thank you for bringing us back to your house again, Lord God. In unity and on one accord, Lord God. We thank you for things being well as they are, Lord God. Even though we lost some loved ones. Lord God, you're still good. Because God, if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. For that, Lord God, we tell you thank you. Lord God, we come this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, this is what we're going to do. I was glad when they said, come into the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord God. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for everyone that came, Lord God. Thank you for everyone that's watching the service that's going to watch it viral, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor, Lord God. We thank you for the church as a whole, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for who you are, for who you is in our lives. Because our lives are hid in you with Christ, Lord God. Lord God, we come to give you praise on and glory on this morning. We come to have a high time in you this morning, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What do we
thinking for the clothes on our back, the shoes on our feet. Heavenly Father, we thinking for the food on our table. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thinking for a roof over our head. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, you love us so much. Heavenly Father, you did all things for us. Heavenly Father, you blessed yeah. us from we been in this church. Heavenly Father, since March of last year, we just thank you for right now. Yeah. Heavenly Father, for the Lord have made it like in Him. Heavenly Father, but Heavenly Father, you seem fit to let a lot of us make it like in Him. Yeah. We just pray for those families that like didn't make it like in Him. Yeah. We just thank you, God, that you kept your hand on us, Heavenly Father. You didn't let us go, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you. We had a lot to have coronavirus, Heavenly Father, but they fought it off and they hit it, Heavenly Father. We don't know who you is, but we thank you, God. But we know you got all power. We know we just love you, God. You're so good to us, Heavenly Father. We just thank you. We thank you for cause to ride here, Heavenly Father. We thank you that we lose no house. We lose no Heavenly Father. Some of us still kept jobs. Some people lost jobs, Heavenly Father. We just thank you, God, because you're good. We just thank you. We thank you for right now, Heavenly Father, because we ain't coming the next hour. We don't know what's going to happen in the next hour, but we're going to praise the Father God's going to run and form in our faith, God. And we just thank you, and we love you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this communion Sunday that we're here to able to take your, your table, your supper, Heavenly Father. We just love you, God. We pray for all the homeless that don't have no way to live. Step up on a bridge. Step up on a, a bus bench. We just pray for them right now. We just thank you, God. Yeah. And we love you and we praise your holy name. Yeah. And everybody that knows the Lord, say amen. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I'm tired.
there will be no noonday prayer this Monday. Amen. Due to our holiday, uh, the 4th of July. Amen. This time we'll have we'll have our scripture from Minister Benton. Then we'll have a song from our choir. Then the next portion we hear will be our very own pastor, Pastor Danny McKenzie. Amen. Good morning, my people.
What a mighty God we serve. You know, there are some things that we often say in theory, but then there are some things we say in confirmation. I can confirm this morning that I'm glad he lives. Amen. Go from March of last year to this present time. And God is still keeping us. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? If that doesn't cause you to praise him, I don't know what we
that's not throwing any punches at anybody. Pastors go through so much that laity don't understand. And I'm not saying that you should understand. You're not in those shoes, so you would never understand. We take bullets that others don't even know we take. Some people have the audacity that they feel like they can say whatever they want to say. And that because you're a man of God or a woman of God, you should just take it and keep moving. I had a, an Elijah moment. Just tell y'all like it is today. You know what Elijah said? Elijah, after having that experience on Mount Carmel, he, he, he was running, in essence, from Jezebel, scripturally, but spiritually he was running because he was tired of fighting with people. Elijah goes with his servants and he told his servants, he said, y'all stay here. I'm going on a little bit further. And, and he went and found himself under a juniper tree. The Bible says that he cried out to God and said, God, I'm not better than my father. Just take my life. Now, I didn't get that far, but I was saying to God, you can, you can have this business of pastor. Tired. I'll just go and serve under someone else. I'm tired. A little over four years ago when I came here, and I shared this with my brothers. I didn't hadn't shared this with the church, but today is Independence Day. <laughs> so you know when I went to Mount Nebo, you all have heard me say this that you all have been more of a blessing to me than I've been to you. Because you don't know the shape I was in when I came. See, I don't wear no wig, I just wear what I got. <laughs> I truck that ain't much anymore. Is it? But you can only dress up so much. No matter what shoes you wear, what suit you wear, how you put on, you can only cosmetically do so much. I was wounded. I was a wounded pastor. And Mount Nebo, you've helped me to heal. reason you said I restored the faith in many, but you all restored the faith in me for people. So understand that what you do is not always about you. For the glory of God and his kingdom. And we do take some shots sometimes. Even Paul, the great apostle, felt like giving up. What am I saying? I'm saying to those of you who are in ministry that sometimes you will have those emotions, those feelings. They're very real. They're very true. Have that moment. Whatever it takes, allow the Holy Spirit to heal you. There's a song, I forget the... Uh, writer but I hear it in my ear so there's a hole in my soul that song resonates with me so I'm just glad to see my people as well. so I want to say to Minister Shepherd Choir members, I know all of you couldn't participate, but for those of you that did provide 
music during the COVID. We're still in COVID, but during the time that we were shut down, thank you for coming out. That level of ministry. Amen. Certainly to all of you, whatever role you played during the time that we were closed, we're still semi-closed. We're, we've opened back up for worship, but our ministries are still meeting virtually. Thank you for still honoring your positions, your ministry doing whatever you could to make sure that Mount Nebo kept moving forward. Amen. There is a word this morning from the Lord that I want to share with you. Please bear with us as we, uh, since this is our first Sunday officially back open, we're still learning. We had some things that we've met. We talked about how to do certain things. And even this morning, we were making adjustments. So please bear with us if, if the ushers or uh, the uh, health ministry or hospitality ask you to do something, please just comply. They're not trying to tell you what to do, but it's for the benefit of all. Y'all with me? So I know I know you're accustomed to sitting in certain places. I can see some of you where you where you normally would sit. So I'm looking in that general direction. So it's a change for me because you know, for example, Trump normally sits right here on this second row. So he's moved back a couple of spaces. So I know you're used to sitting on certain sides and certain places and certain seats, but because of uh, precautions, we've had to make some adjustments. Amen. So please bear with us. All right. As we move forward, things will get better. Amen. Amen. John 19. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. You don't have to stand. Just, just open your Bibles or your electronic device at John 19. Beginning at verse 25. It says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there. And they filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on his hyssop, and put it up to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. I want to talk this morning about it is finished. It is, it is finished. Father God, we thank you today. We honor your name in this house, in this place. Bless us now, bless your people, that we may be strengthened and empowered and encouraged by your word today. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us, that all that we do and all that we say would be to your glory and the honor of your name. Let nothing be done out of vain glory, but all be done for the glory of your kingdom. God, we thank you for having chosen us for such a time as this. We honor you. We bow at your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It is finished. It is finished. What does it mean to be free? What does it mean to be free? 
free. Declaration of Independence opens by saying when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impelled them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just power from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. And to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such forms, as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. An essential historical point not to be missed is that the signers of the Declaration anticipated and articulated language about such a great freedom even though the people of the New World were yet locked in an armed struggle against the British for independence. Declaration that it has so de articulated and declared. In fact, it was not until 1783, with the signing of the Treaty of Paris on September 3rd, that the Revolutionary War officially ended and America freedom became a political reality. Although African Americans and other oppressed groups such as the Native Americans had to wait to experience even the most basic of freedoms enjoyed by the writers of the Declaration and the signers of the treaty. The Declaration, nonetheless, gives wisdom a witness to a profound truth which even the likes of Harriet Tubman understood. That is, freedom must first be claimed in one's heart and mind long before it can materially become real. This point makes one interesting question regarding freedom. Here it is. Is freedom solely attained at the moment one has decided to be free and has claimed the freedom one intends to pursue through action? Or is freedom only attained at the point at which one has actually won the struggle against oppression and suppression? At what point does suppression cease? Which is essentially to ask, is it a, is it a physical thing or a psychological reality? This morning I want to tell you that tragedy can rob you of both your freedom, your freedom and your faith. Distance between faith and doubt is a very short distance. And as we look today at this scene recorded in the Gospel of John, we see that the stage is set for this drama to unfold. History is bright as light is fading behind a cloud of disbelief and hatred. Jesus has made claims that have been interpreted as blasphemous by the Jewish officials. The Romans, though, had no reason to fear him as a rebel. Suddenly, Jesus finds himself surrounded by his enemies. Watch this now. He's surrounded by a disciple who is now turned traitor. He's surrounded by Roman military. Mm -hmm. He's surrounded by religious folk who misunderstood his calling and mission. 
He's surrounded by a band of frightened and bewildered disciples. On the cross, Jesus cries out, it is finished. This statement is the sixth of seven sins that Jesus utters from the cross of Calvary. In our English language, we have three words, but in Greek, it is really only one word to tell us that. This word during this time period in history meant the completion of a transaction. It meant that whatever the agreement was has now been fully and finally satisfied. It is a word that was used by merchants whenever a debt has been paid in full the word to tell us that was the word that was stamped on the documents. This word brought about joy and delight to the debtor because the debt was now paid in full. Think about this. When the last assignment is turned in at the end of the school year, it is finished. When that final car payment is made, Hallelujah, Jesus. It is finished. When that last hospital bill has been paid, it is finished. When that last mortgage payment has been received and the bank sends you back document stamp paid in full, those are moments of joy and excitement in the heart of those who Tell us that. It means that all the legal obligations required have not been fully satisfied. Jesus utilizes this word because it speaks great volumes this morning. Notice here that Jesus does not say, I am finished. Because had he said, I am finished, that would suggest that he died as a defeated and exhausted individual. Rather, he says, it is finished. Are y'all with me this morning? It is here he, that Jesus uses this word in the perfect tense in the Greek language. That's important because the perfect tense speaks of an action which has been completed in the past with results continuing on into the present. It's different from the past sense because past sense only looks backwards to a specific event and says this happened or that occurred on this particular day. But when Jesus cried out, it is finished. He meant it was finished in the past. It is finished in the present. And it was remain finished long into the future. Jesus is saying that I have successfully and completely finished the work that I came to do. But the question is, and I don't want to hold you too long. What was finished? What was finished? He said it is finished, but what was finished? Power of sin no longer dominates over you and I. This does not say that sin is finished and gone because sin is still with us today. But the Bible tells us that we all sinners, we are all sinners by nature and choice. There is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. While sin is indeed present among us, it doesn't hold power over us. When Jesus died, he took our sins upon himself. That's the essence of Isaiah chapter 53 when Isaiah tells us that by his stripes we are healed. The reason this is important is the wage, the payment, the compensation, the salary 
pay for sin is still death. Every time you and I sin, death is required. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or remission of sin. God cannot fellowship with sin. Talk to me in this house. He proved this in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve received their eviction papers. God says, I can't fellowship with sin. So then I got to send someone to die for your sin. That's where the church ought to celebrate on this Independence Sunday because one came and died for our sin. God's desire was that man and woman were to live in a close relationship and loving relationship with their creator and conduct their lives as an expression of that relationship. Man of the high ever decided they could not live that they could live on their own without God. That was a choice in the garden. This decision destroyed the intimacy of their relationship with God and as a result created a void in their relationship with their divine maker. Here it is. Sin separates us from God. Don't get nervous because I use that three letter word. It's a reality. We are born in sin. And that's not to say that your mother or your father did something wrong. No, it's because the blood is tainted already. Y'all ain't going to help me here today. Yeah, the bloodline is already contaminated with sin. So one has to die for our sin. Here it is, sin. It's like a no trespassing sign posted in someone's yard. You see the sign. You read the sign. You understood what the sign said. But you decided in your own mind to proceed anyway. That's what sin is. Sin is transgressing against the laws of God. Here it is. Blessings were exchanged for curses. Evil. Envy. Pain to the point that Cain kills his own brother. That's the result of sin. Sin is the essence of rebellion. God was forgotten, but, but never ending grace of God would not allow his crowning work to go down the drain. Right now. Rather than withdrawing from us, God established a new covenant relationship with humanity. Yeah. Right. Death of Jesus on the cross gives us power to live a new life. Right. Because of his death and resurrection, we can face the struggles of life. Christian is never exempt from trouble because he or she lives his life at the cross. At the cross. At the cross. Where the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and now I'm happy. All the day. But that happened at the cross. Talk to me in here. That didn't happen on 2251 Northwest 22nd Street. No, that happened at the cross. We were in for a long fight, but the power of the cross and the resurrection gives us the courage and the strength to face whatever would happen because Jesus shouted, It is finished. Jesus' death on the cross gives us a picture of life well lived and given. He did not give his life for himself. He gave his life for you and I. What a marvelous Savior. Self has a way of promoting self. Had Jesus been that kind of person, he would have abandoned the cross. His dying Gave us a recipe.
recipe for finding significance in, in, in this life and in this world. The Bible reveals that there are three concepts that work within us that destroys life. These are Satan, sin, and self. Satan, sin, and self. If Satan doesn't cause it, self gets in the way. Talk to me somebody. And so by his death, Jesus illustrates what, had, what he has taught. Love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. On the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. That is, the power of sin no longer reigns over us. But then secondly, God's plan of redemption is clear. Look at 1 Peter 3 and 18. It says, for Christ also suffered once for sin. The righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. It was because the wages of sin is death. That's physical and eternal. That, that's why Jesus came to earth. Left to ourselves, we have no hope, brethren. In the cross of Jesus, we are offered to be forgiven of our sins. Granted a new home in heaven, aligned to the fullest down here. Jesus said, it is finished. It means I've done all I can do. It's up to you now to make the right decision. And your decision will determine your eternal destination. Heaven or hell is a choice that you and I must make. Eternity calls. Which role will you choose? Right Acts 16, a Roman soldier is about to commit suicide. Yeah. And Paul spoke up telling him not to end his life. Well. The soldier responded by asking an all-important question. What must I do well. to be saved? Right the reply comes, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. He could say this because the plan of salvation was finished and completed on the cross of Calvary. The cross of Jesus represents a message of triumph. Death has been turned into victory. The darkness of Good Friday was exceeded by the genius of Easter morning. The cross is a sign of victory. Battle was fallen on Calvary, but the victory in God's master plan of redemption is complete in the rising of Jesus from the grave. No longer then should we be excessively worried about death because he who was dead now lives on the inside of us. Because of what Jesus said on the cross, we can join in with the songwriter who says, it ain't over until God says it's over. First verse of that song says, I know the odds look stacked against you. And it seems there's no way out. I, I know the issue seems unchangeable. And there's no reason to shout. But the impossible is God's chance to work a miracle. So just know it ain't over, my Nebo, until God says it's over. Yeah, somebody ought to have that testimony this morning. It ain't over until God says it's over. Then last, a transformation has taken place. Old Testament types and prophecies were now fulfilled. Sufferings ordained by God were finished. Often during his ministry, Jesus spoke of the work he was sent to do and of the hour of trouble that was headed his way. Mm. He once spoke of a baptism of suffering that he must undergo. But those sufferings were now all completed. The work of redemption was now finished and the ceremonial law was abolished. Matthew Henry in his commentary says the death of Christ provided a full 
satisfaction for sin, dealt a final blow to Satan. The fountain of grace was open that will flow forever. The foundation of peace laid that will last forever. One of the glories of God's creation is the monarch butterfly. Begins his nine month life as a tiny egg on a milkweed plant. That is the only food supply for the larva that emerges from the egg. Hmm. 15 days, caterpillar increases its weight 27,000 times. Time, its skin begins to harden. For movement becomes impossible, the caterpillar attaches itself to a protected place above the ground. In 15 days, a marvelous transformation takes place, and the beautiful black and orange monarch butterfly emerges. Soon it is on its way back north after wintering in the Florida Peninsula of the Gulf Coast of the Montario Santa Cruz coastal region of California. Yeah. It will made and the life cycle will continue for this beautiful demonstration of God's love and creative genius. Isn't this beautiful example of God's will for transformation and a new life for humanity? Jesus lived a short life of beauty and power. Through his death and resurrection, he gave to all the possibility of a new life and glory in him. We can be changed from an insignificant existence into his likeness to live forever. So I say to you on this day of independence, he is risen. Because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Reason I know that because he holds my future in the heart of his hand. I ain't got no witnesses in here. The Christ that now lives is not a distant memory. He's present in our hearts today. He's present on our minds as we return to the sanctuary. He's present in our spirits. He is not a figure in time because he is timeless. Yeah, when doors close and life tumbles in. When the lamps and the lights begin to flicker. When hope no longer sees a star. Love no longer hears the rustling of the leaves. When horizons lose their crimson and skies become silent. When it becomes touch and go, then a voice saying be not afraid because I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore on good Friday the world said crucify him but on that faithful Sunday morning God said it ain't over because Jesus is the first fruits of them who will live in eternity with me there's no grave deep enough no seal imposing enough. No stone heavy enough to keep my Jesus in a grave. That's why on this Sunday morning we sing and shout, Jesus is alive and well. You ask me how I know he lives within my heart. Can I get some help in here? I can feel him moving in my hands. I can feel him moving in my feet. Can I get a witness in here? I can feel him moving in this house this morning. Anybody in here can feel him moving in this place. I'm glad today that he lives. Can I get a witness here? Anybody know he lives? What did he do this morning? He touched me. Somebody asked me, who touched me? Must have been the hand of the Lord. Who touched me? It was my Lord and my Savior. Who touched me? It was my God and my Redeemer. Who touched me? It was my way maker when I can't see my way. Ain't he alright? I said, ain't he alright? Has he been good to 
to you. You ought to wave your hands and celebrate today. And I'm glad he lives. I'm glad he's alive. Hey! Any all right? I said, any all right? You ought to give him praise this morning. Somebody counted you out, but you're still here. Somebody doubted you, but you're still here. Somebody said you'll never amount to anything, but I'm still here. By the grace of God. Hey! Some of y'all been waiting on this moment, but you're still sitting in the pew. You ought to get up on your feet and give him glory. You ought to get on your feet and give him praise. Not because I've been good.
Amen. We want to extend the invitation to discipleship. Amen. I believe and we all should believe that whenever the word has been spoken, as we preach, whenever the word of God has been offered, amen, there needs to be room for someone to accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Would there be one this morning? Amen. One this morning that said, I yield, I yield. Amen. I believe that it is finished. I want to come and be a part of the family of Jesus Christ. Would there be one this morning? Amen. Would there be one this morning that wants to come and just join the church? Amen, somebody. Would there be one someone this morning? Amen. You don't have a church home and you're looking for a place to worship. Mount Nebo is a great place to worship the one and true living God. Will there be one this morning? Amen, amen. Saints of God, come on, put your hands together. Amen. Come on. Concerning, concerning our giving on today. Well. You all should have received an envelope, amen, to put your, your offering in. The pastor has asked that you would include your benevolence and your offering into this envelope. There's only one offering. That's at the end of service as you exit. If you would just itemize and what your contribution is and then total it, put everything in the same envelope. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's time we receive our pastor. Well. chapter 22 verse 14 says when the hour had come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him then he said to them with fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say to you I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine till the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. Truly, the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Let's pray. Turn to God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your bountiful blessings. Thank you for blessing us here today that we are able to meet once again in this house designated as your house of worship. Father, we thank you for these, your people who have come. We ask that you will bless us now, cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness, that as we partake in this memorial service, that we reflect upon the life that you lived, the example that you gave us, how you died in our stead, we may have a more excellent way. God, we give you glory, yes. we give you honor, but most of all, we give you praise. Oh it's in Jesus' wonderful name, we do ask and give thanks. And the church said, Amen. 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 
That night in the upper room, Jesus took the bread, broke it, and blessed it. Gave it to the disciples. When you eat, eat you all of it. Likewise, the cup, which represents his shed blood, where there is no shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. When you drink, drink you all of it. Oh, uh -huh.